Hello and welcome to Nick's Allotment Diary. I thought you might like a tour of the allotment today to see what's growing in September. So firstly I'll show you this bed. So this has the courgettes and pumpkins and squashes in. Um, I've harvested quite a few of the green courgettes in the last few days but there are plenty of yellow courgettes coming. You can see there is a uh, powdery mildew starting to appear on the leaves now. Um, there's a good example of one. So what I'm going to do is to try spraying the leaves with milk because I believe that does help to cut down the amount of mildew. But at this time of the year, I think it's inevitable that we get powdery mildew because it's uh, sort of warm and damp. There's a pumpkin growing there. That's one of the uh, Cinderella pumpkins. Um, there aren't many squashes to be honest. I think I was too late in putting them in uh, this year. So I need to uh, try something different next year and try and remember to get them in much earlier. There's one growing down there. Here's a late blooming sunflower. So. Uh, Quite a thin one, this one. But, uh, it's about six foot tall, maybe. About as tall as I am. The self-seeded, multi-headed sunflower is still going strong, still producing lots of flowers, lots of side shoots. Uh, again, never had more than probably about half a dozen in flower at the same time on this one, but it's produced loads. Um, Unfortunately, it does seem to get uh, battered by the wind quite a bit, this one. I haven't got it staked. Uh, so, a few of the flowers have uh, broken off, unfortunately. Over to this bed now. So this is the bed that's got the climbing French beans in. Now this has done really well. These are cobra beans, so you can see plenty of them coming there. Lots of nice thin ones. I've tried to keep on top of uh, cropping these, but um, they're growing very fast um, and there's still loads at the top. Uh, all those, so I shall definitely be cropping these today. Um, the ones with the yellow flowers, so these are the Blue Lake beans, so they're sort of not as long as the uh, cobra beans. There's an example of one. Um, just two plants of that on the end, but they've been quite prolific and I've been quite pleased with those. So I think next year I might do a half and half combination of Cobra and the Blue Lake. Over to the tomatoes. So these are the Crimson Crush tomatoes. Um, plenty of those. Uh, I have tried to pull away some of the leaves now. Now uh, it's later on in the season to see if they'll ripen up uh, a bit more. Um, plenty of tomatoes coming. Uh, I've tried to stop them as much as I can now from growing any taller, but I do need to do that again because of that last weekend. I need to do it again. And here are the crimson cherry tomatoes. I'm not as done as well as I'd hoped. This was a grafted plant, so I would have expected it to uh, have produced a lot more than it has. Again, I was uh, very behind in putting stuff out this year. We had this very hot weather and it was so dry, I didn't want to plant stuff into the ground. Uh, and that was my mistake really. I should have got them in probably in about June. Whereas a lot of these plants didn't go in till possibly early July into the ground. Marigolds, they've done really well here. Companion planting with the tomatoes. Loads of those growing. Um, and then over to the flower bed. That really could do with uh, a bit of work now. You can see the calendula have done well. They've flowered and flowered and flowered. And they're producing loads of seed pods. Um, roses, 
they are more or less gone over but there are some buds still to come on this one on the red one uh, some examples there so they're still flowering um, the yellow and the pink one is finished now and the yellow one has succumbed quite a bit to uh, black spots so I need to make sure this year that I pick any uh, affected leaves off and remove any leaves around the base because the spores are black spots sort of uh, overwinter on uh, fallen leaves so if you get black spot best to try and get cut out affected uh, branches and remove any leaves that are left on the ground which is a fungal disease so it's, uh, it's quite easily spread the pink roses are finished now uh, I put those back uh, I don't expect I'll get any more buds on that this year. Verbena, this is the purple verbena. That has produced uh, loads of flowers this year. That's done well. The bees like that and the butterflies. Now the middle bed that used to have the onions in and the sweet corn. I've uh, managed to harvest most of the sweet corn now. The sweet corn that's left on it, um, samples there have been affected by rodent damage, mice or rats. Um, I always seem to have that problem with sweet corn. But the plants are dying back now. Most of the cobs have been uh, moved now, but there are some that are sort of thin, that haven't uh, developed. There's an example one there. You can see the, uh, the silt's on the top, but it's not fattened up. so. It's basically not been pollinated, I think. So I don't think that they'll do much more this year. So they'll be coming out soon. Over to this bed. The only thing that's done really well in this bed has been the chard, the rainbow chard. Um, as you can see there, there's plenty of uh, new growth on that. I planted a couple of tomatoes in there late in the season, the, the plum tomatoes. Uh, Roma, so uh, I might get the odd tomato off that, but the onions in this bed didn't do well at all. They didn't survive. That was because I mentioned before on a previous video, the plum tree basically had taken a lot of the moisture and the nutrients out of the soil. I think so. Um, definitely um, going to think about that for next year and decide whether I put anything in this bed other than let the plum tree grow or whether just to use this end of the bed, this, uh, this bit here, that's away from the roots of the tree. Over to the brassicas. So these have done quite well. These are the broccoli in this row here. And then we have some sprout plants uh, in that row there with some kale. And then we have some Savoy cabbage, the ones with the uh, crinkly leaves there, you can see. And some uh, greyhound cabbage at the end. And the leeks. Um, only a few leeks I've got in this year. I should really have planted quite a few more plants, but uh, unfortunately I didn't have the space at the time. Um, so. There's a few leek plants, so they'll be uh, good in the uh, late winter, early spring, I think. Potatoes in buckets. Right, so uh, last weekend I, um, I went through all the potatoes in buckets and removed all the dead growth from the top. So I still have quite a few buckets of potatoes to turn out. Um, probably need to do that soon, otherwise the potatoes in there will get damaged. But I have decided to leave at least a couple of buckets uh, and just put them uh, somewhere sheltered and then I'll um, harvest those at uh, Christmas time. Over to the fruit trees. So here's the apples. These are the red apples. I'm not sure the variety, I'm afraid. Um, but they've done well. A little bit of a bump on that one, but. There's quite a few apples that are ripe and ready for picking now. So I need to get those uh, picked and harvested. So I need to harvest those now. Uh, there's an example that's come straight off of my hand. So it's definitely ready. 
quite pleased with those apples. And there is uh, another variety of apple. Um, so these have got a, a green with a sort of pinkish. Uh, so this is the other stem of the apple. It's a, a duo apple, so it's got uh, basically two varieties. So there we go, there's the harvest of the apples from the apple tree. Not many this year, uh, but the tree's only a few years old. So each year I'm getting more apples, to be fair. Uh, but they're not too bad, not too damaged, so quite pleased with those, to be honest. Over to the strawberry patch. Now, as you can see, that's not done very well at all this year. It's been uh, swamped by bindweed. So this winter, what I'm going to do is dig out this patch completely, get as much of the bindweed root out as I can, and then uh, reset the bed, I think. Um, there are plenty of strawberry plants, so I should be able to salvage quite a few of those, but um, the bindweed has uh, swamped the strawberries, to be honest. Over to the fruit cage. This also was swamped with bindweed this year. So a winter job for me this year is to thin out this cage a bit. I think the plants are a little bit too close together for me to get into harvest properly. And also to see what I can do about uh, dealing with some of the bindweed roots. So another winter job when everything's died back. Uh, a little bit of digging in the fruit cage. Into the greenhouse now. So uh, over here we have all the tomato plants. Um, quite a few tomatoes to come. There are the indigo cherry tomatoes there at the back. Those are delicious tomatoes when they come. And then we've got uh, sun gold. And uh, over here we have the cucumber. That's produced a few cucumbers this year. Now over to the peppers. So we've got uh, quite a lot of the pointed peppers. Uh, still green, they haven't reddened up yet. They do uh, go to a red colour. Um, we have some bell peppers there. Um, they're going to be yellow bell peppers. Uh, some more peppers here these are uh, again yellow we have the lunchbox peppers and that one's starting to color up now so plenty of peppers to come uh, again I've been late in putting those into the greenhouse um, I did have problems early on in the season with uh, getting the peppers started uh, next year um, I'm going to uh, definitely just use multi-purpose compost. I made the mistake this year of using coir compost to start off um, a lot of my seedlings in the uh, propagator and I subsequently found out from uh, Marty's garden that quite often coir compost if you buy it in uh, the compressed blocks can contain a lot of salt and that um, can inhibit your plant's growth. So uh, my advice to you would be um, check out your compost that you're going to use uh, just to make sure that it's not going to affect your plants. So I won't be using the compressed queer blocks anymore. Under the bench we have some Apache chilies. They've done well and there are various tomato plants that I haven't planted out there. Uh, they are the side shoots from other tomato plants that I've just uh, rooted. Uh, they're probably a bit late to go anywhere now, but uh, there are a few plants to plant out. The sun is now out on the plot and it feels a little bit autumnal today. Hope you enjoyed that tour of my allotment in September. Thanks very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment. I'll see you again next time.